Our next topic in the math review for physical chemistry playlist is polynomial roots. So the root of a polynomial is a value of the variable at which the polynomial evaluates to zero. So for an even degree polynomial, reminding ourselves that the, the degree is the maximum exponent at which you have some non-zero coefficient. So x squared has a degree of 2, 3x squared, still 2, um, 2x cubed would have a degree of 3, etc. So if you have an even degree, you're going to have somewhere between 0 and the degree for the number of roots. And for an odd degree, you have at least 1, and then you can go up to the degree as well. All right, so the simplest case would be a constant function. So there are two different cases for constant functions. The first is where we have 0, is where the function equals uh, some non-zero value. So you have zero roots in that case because the function is never equal to zero. If I have f of x equals 4, well, 4 is never equal to zero, so you have zero roots. And that makes sense because the degree of that is zero, and zero is even in, in this case. So we have zero less than or equal to n less than or equal to zero. So we have zero roots for a constant non-zero function. The other possibility is that we have f of x equals 0, in which case for every value of x we equal 0. So how many values of x are there? Well, there are an infinite number of values of x. So in that case, we have an infinite number of roots if the coefficient is equal to 0 for this constant polynomial. So this is another reason why we define the order of a 0 polynomial to be negative infinity and also why I took the time to put absolute value here for the degree because for an infinity uh, if we have a function here 0 less than or equal to the number of roots less than or equal to the magnitude of negative infinity is infinity so that evaluates true here so for a function which is 0 we have an infinite number of roots every value of x is a root of the function Okay, moving on to linear functions, f of x equals a coefficient a1 times x plus a constant a0. So in this case, that's a degree of 1, so it's between 1 and 1, so it can only be 1. So there's one root of a linear function, and if you set this equal to 0 and solve, you'll find that x equals negative a0 over a1, where that root is. So if you have x equal to this value, your linear polynomial will evaluate to 0, giving you where the root is. All right, then something that's very familiar to us from algebra, the quadratic equation. If we have a quadratic polynomial, f of x equals coefficient times x squared plus coefficient times x plus coefficient, that's going to give us between somewhere between 0 and 2 real roots because some of them might be imaginary. So the solution to this is the familiar, <clears throat> if I call this a, b, and c, would be negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, but I've labeled these differently, so I have the labels that I've used in there. And we have this value here uh, called the uh, discriminant, and depending on whether this is positive, negative, or zero, is whether is going to tell us the number of real roots that we end up getting. So the number of real roots that we get for a second order polynomial, so there the degree is two, so we can get either zero, one, or two for the number of roots. We get zero if a1 squared is less than for a2, a0. So that in that case, the discriminant is negative, and both roots are imaginary. If they are equal to one another, then this minus this is 0, and this, plus or, this is just a plus or minus 0 here, and we get one real root. And in the other case, where the first term is bigger than the second term, this number is going to be positive, and the plus or minus gives you two real roots. Uh, there are analytic formulas for third and fourth order. So analytic meaning there is some exact closed form. I can write it down on paper in terms of all the inputs like this. 
There are exact formulas for third and fourth order polynomials, but they get much more complicated than these types of formulas. So uh, often you start using other methods that we have to use for things at fifth order and beyond. So solving for the roots of fifth order and beyond polynomials, we usually have to use some type of numerical technique. And there, solving numerically means approximately getting some actual numerical value for the result instead of the exact analytic answer in terms of all the inputs. So some of those methods are called newton raphson etc. You might have uh, your professor give a homework assignment where you have to use one of those types of methods. Maybe not, but uh, if you have to, if you find yourself having to solve one of those polynomials, uh, don't go looking for a formula. What you're looking for is some type of numerical method, or plugging it into some type of mathematical solver that'll give you some of the answers that you're looking for.